call the meeting to order, please. Uh, roll call. Mayor Yanish. Here. Council Member Rees. Here. Christensen. Here. Anderson. Here. Amon. Here. Johnson. Here. Dockin. Here. Baggerly. Here. Dubliek. Here. Nine present, zero absent. Would you all please stand as we say the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For whatever interest, I should uh, mention to you that I had a, took a little fall before I came to uh, the council meeting, and uh, I have a black eye, <laughs> and contrary to everyone's uh, opinion, I did not fight with city administrator. <laughs> so please bear with me as we, uh, as we go along. The uh, consent items, proposed additions or deletions to the agenda. Are there any? With that, we will move to approve the consent items uh, as written. So moved. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the consent items. Uh, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That uh, motion carries. In recognition of a retiring city employee, I'm going to give this over to Charlene. Um, yes, Mayor and City Council, just wanted to recognize the city employee that will be retiring at, um, at, on April 28th, Terry Thole. Terry Thole has been um, with the city for over 12 years of service. He has worked in um, at the Civic Center and then um, is finishing his career with the city as a wastewater treatment uh, at the wastewater treatment facility as one of our operators. Uh, Terry has been a very good employee for the city. We certainly wish him well in his retirement. He couldn't be here um, this evening, but will get recognized um, at an event on April 27th um, at the city. One of the, the kind of highlights for Terry's career was that he was on the team um, that helped plan and design the new wastewater treatment facility. And so um, he really um, did, went above and beyond in doing his job. Appreciate all of the work that he has done for us. And according to folks is that he plans to spend some of his retirement doing a little more fishing. And so we certainly wish Terry uh, well and want to thank him for his 12 years of service for the city and wanted to have an opportunity thank to recognize very much. him. Appreciate that. Thank you and thank you and best wishes to Terry. <coughs> Uh, but this time we'll move into the open uh, forum. Uh, is anyone scheduled to speak? I'm not certain if anybody is choosing to. I think they were here for the planning commission activity, but which is already concluded. No? No takers. I'm sorry? <laughs> I said no takers. That's okay. okay. Uh, with that, we'll move into the Finance Committee report for April 9th, uh, 2012. Uh, Councilman Anderson. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, first item on our agenda was the HRA Dominium Conduit Financing Recommendation. Jill Bankston, the Executive Director of the HRA, reported that the HRA Board met earlier that afternoon and they held a public hearing for the Dominium uh, application for tax exempt financing for $14 million of tax exempt bonds to finance the acquisition and rehabilitation of Eagle Ridge, Somerset, and Waters Edge apartments. Uh, Ms. Bankston briefly reviewed some of the questions that came up during the public hearing, and they included uh, answers were, while the, the uh, contractors are, the general contractors aren't local, uh, they try to use local uh, contractors uh, as they can on where it's possible. Uh, approximately $3 million will be direct rehabilitation costs and the developer's fee is 10%. Um, upon closing the public hearing, the HRA <coughs> board passed a resolution approving the project. Councilmember Christensen questioned who would be left with the debt if the project failed, and staff responded that the holders of the investment uh, instruments would be ultimately responsible. Following discussion, there was a motion made seconded and passed, and I would introduce a resolution approving the Dominium Conduit 
financing project for the acquisition and rehabilitation of Eagle Ridge, Somerset, and Waters Edge apartments not to exceed $14 million. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce the resolution <coughs> approving the Dominion Conduit financing project for the acquisition and rehabilitation of Eagle Ridge, Somerset, and Waters Edge apartments not to exceed $14 million. Is there any discussion? Councilman Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, once again to emphasize uh, the importance of hiring uh, local people uh, for the uh, remodeling part of it. Um, as many subs as you can get from here. I know that you um, have a general contract that you work with most of the time, but uh, would appreciate any work that you could go into the local subcontractors. Councilman Norman? Uh, yeah, I wonder if somebody could just clarify, uh, <clears throat> again, uh, the benefits that we're receiving for, for uh, going through the uh, financing with this developer. I believe that's part of the criteria. It has to promote some public policy or public yep. good. Would you care to address that, Jill? Jill Bingson, HRA. Um, well, I think the community benefit in, in doing the project is we continue to have an affordable housing project in the community. We're not going to be losing any um, affordable units. Um, part of the stipulation of the HRA issuing the bonds is we currently have a lot of Section 8 uh, tenants that live in the projects that is owned by Dominion. And we wanted to preserve, preserve as, much of the, as many of those units as possible that Dominion was willing to work with us to keep those rents affordable at the Section 8 levels. So um, we did agree with Dominion that 25% um, that of their units will remain affordable to Section 8 tenants as they have turnover in their vacancies. Does that also that include uh, the proposed, the, I saw the proposed schedule for, uh, it was a $485 a month rent or something like that, I remember, based on the size of the, of the apartments. <clears throat> yeah, they have certain um, uh, rent guidelines for, for the project, but Section 8 is actually even lower than what they're proposing in the, in the project that we're financing. Um, making bonds for. Um, so that's where that 25% comes in. That's actually, they're actually agreeing to go lower than what they're proposing to do with their project. So that was one of the conditions we put on in order for the HRA to do conduit financing. We wanted to have some of that to preserve at the Section 8 rent limits. If I remember right, um, the uh, current owners or partners in, in this particular program are reselling it uh, uh, to another entity, and, and that's the entity that's here uh, asking for the request, correct? I'm, I'm just going to let someone that's more with that do that. Yeah. Mayor, members of the City Council, my name is Ron Mell. I'm with Dominium Development. Um, we are selling the, the partnership or the, the ownership to a different entity, and there are different owners involved. Um, both from a limited partnership standpoint as well as, as the various owners that are involved in, in the project. Do you, um, currently, the, uh, I think the majority of the shareholders, I think there was like 50 individuals, plus there were two primary individuals who had control or almost controlling interest in the property. And that is yourself and somebody else? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just a, I'm a, I'm a developer for okay. Dominium, but okay. um, those are the various principles of Dominium, yes. So. Yeah. And the price of those homes, um, or the price of the sale of those properties uh, is based on uh, affordable rent for the people in, in Wilmer and also it, it, it turns money back over to the original investors. It does. For um, a profit. It does, absolutely. Yes. We, are, we are a for-profit company. And right. Th that is something that we, that we do. Yeah. Um, so if you're for, uh, for profit, I, I guess philosophically it's, this is all legal. Oh, yes, yeah, well, we've done it on a number of... It's number completely, of but in principle, <laughs> I don't think it's right. <laughs> okay. I, just want to, I just want to be up front and forward with you. I, I don't appreciate think that. it's right that we are subsidizing a for-profit entity that is increasing the value of, of their property, selling two different entities who already control a very large portion of it to benefit the shareholders at the expense of the government. And 
there's not really a big ex no expense to the government. It's just saving you some money. And I'm glad you're here. I'm glad yeah, yeah. you're going ahead with the project. Sure. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I wish you the best of luck. Yeah. But I just want to be up front and forward with you and say, <coughs> principle, in principle, I don't agree with it. Okay. But I'm glad you're doing the project. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Any further discussion? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Roll call. Council Member Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Ahman. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Fagerly. Aye. Debley. Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. And that motion carries. The second item on our agenda has to do with the HRA vehicle request. Staff presented to us a request from the HRA for the donation of a 2005 Ford F-150 pickup that the city was preparing for auction. This is one of the vehicles that the city had deemed as surplus as we went through the uh, revisions to the vehicle replacement policy. The HRA has examined that vehicle and determined that it would meet the needs uh, and is requesting it as a donation. It was noted that state statute does allow for a public entity to donate surplus equipment to another public entity. It is also noted that the city would be foregoing potential auction proceeds of about $6,500, and that's based on NADA Blue Book estimates. Uh, the committee kind of expressed some concerns that the HRA maybe shouldn't receive the vehicle at no cost, um, but should be required to pay some sort of a price. And following some discussion, it was moved, and I would introduce a resolution uh, authorizing the city administrator to dispose of the 2005 Ford F-150 pickup for a minimum of $5,000 to be sold to the HRA. Second. <coughs> a motion has been made and seconded to introduce the resolution authorizing the city administrator to dispose of the 2005 Ford F-150 for a minimum of $5,000 to the HRA. Discussion? Roll call. Council Member Christians. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Fagerly. Aye. Debley. Aye. Reese. Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. And that motion carries. The third item on our agenda had to do with the budget workshop that we just conducted uh, <clears throat> that was held at 6 o'clock today. And we discussed uh, five year trends for the general operating fund updates on the budget calendar. Uh, including a schedule of the department heads presentations to the finance committee, bonding and plans for the street program, capital improvements, and we also had some discussion about uh, suggestions for things that the council would like to see in the 2013 budget. That was for information only. The fourth item was uh, 2012 budget amendments in the legal department. Staff explained that due to the city engaging the professional services of two legal firms to replace Mr. Ronning, who retired March 31st, the 2012 legal department operating budget needs to be revised. It's being proposed that the unspent dollars allocated in the legal department budget for payroll costs, supplies, and other services and charges that are estimated at $125,000 be transferred to professional services. Following discussion, there was a motion made seconded and passed, and I would introduce a resolution reallocating $125,000 from the 2012 legal department budget for payroll costs, supplies, and other services and charges to legal professional services. Second. A motion has been made <coughs> and seconded to introduce the resolution reallocating $125,000 from the 2012 legal department budget for payroll costs, supplies, and other services and charges to legal professional services. Is there a discussion? Roll call. Council Member Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Bagerly. Aye. Debley. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. And that motion carries. The next item has to do with uh, library carpet replacement. Staff explained that the city has received a request from the Wilmer Public Library for funds needed to replace the carpeting. Candioi County sought bids and is recommended, recommending proceeding with the proposal from floor to ceiling in the amount of $35,800. Administrator Stevens has viewed the carpet and affirms that it is in need of replacement. 
The cost of this project uh, may be paid from the library reserve fund, which was established from the prior local op option sales tax program that funded the library's construction. Following discussion, there was a motion made seconded and passed, and I would introduce a resolution allocating $35,800 from the library reserve fund for the carpeting replacement as proposed by floor to ceiling and recommended by Candy Oye County Facilities Maintenance. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to introduce the resolution allocating $35,800 from the library reserve fund for the carpeting replacement as proposed by floor to ceiling and recommended by Candy Ohio County Facilities Maintenance. Discussion? Roll call. Council Member Amon. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Fagerly. Aye. Dablik. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. That motion carries. The next item was a KRA Speedway liquor license application. City Clerk Halliday explained to us that the city has received a request from the KRA Speedway Association to sell wine and strong beer during their races at the fairgrounds on Thursday nights. Last year, this was done with the services of the VFW State Caterers License, but KRA wishes to sell on their own this year. Current city ordinance allows for the sale of wine and strong beer at a restaurant with a seating capacity of at least 25 guests. A cafe restaurant is defined as any place where preparing and serving lunches or meals to the public to, to be consumed on the premises constituted the major business. KRA will be selling hamburgers and brats on Thursday nights. Staff is requesting input from the council to determine whether or not they are comfortable with the restaurant term as preparing meals in a fairground building and seating capacity of more than 25 located in the bleachers. <clears throat> After a long discussion, it was the consensus of the committee to support the interpretation of the ordinances that would allow KRA Speedway Association to apply for a wine license and a 3.2% malt liquor license. This matter was for information only, but I'm, I'm wondering if, if everyone is that wasn't at the meeting is clear on that and, and is in agreement with what the uh, committee felt. We, we felt unanimously that it was okay, that it, it met the criteria. I don't have a problem with it. No, I think it's not a problem with it. I think it's okay. I mean, staff's recommended it meets the criteria. I think that um, should allow them to apply for it. Okay, I just, just wanted to Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, go ahead. One other thing, they said they're in competition with the Stingers, so it really won't be any different what the Stingers do at the ballpark, what they do at the raceway. Okay. So. And, and they have not applied yet, or maybe they have, but they hadn't at that time, so they haven't applied for the license yet, but their application will be subject to review by the uh, police chief to make sure that they have appropriate security and, and uh, able to make sure that they don't serve minors, so, okay. So that was for information only, so there is no motion or anything no. that needs to be done? There is not. No. Okay. Nothing yet. Thank you. Okay, the, the next item was a senior citizen deferment. Clerk Halliday explained to us that during a 1990 street improvement project, a senior citizen deferment was approved on parcel number 95, 921, 5480. The qualifying senior citizen is now 90 plus years of age and recently transferred the property to a 65 plus year old daughter who placed the property in her son's name and took a life estate interest. Uh, she may qualify for this senior citizen deferment, but this unique situation is at the discretion of the council. Uh, if the extension is denied, the full payment of principal and interest totaling $7,029 would be due and payable. Uh, again, this was another item where we had a good lengthy discussion and it was a consensus of the committee. There was a motion made, seconded, and passed, and I would move the recommendation to deny the extension of the senior citizen deferment on parcel 95, 921, 5480, and to amend the city's assessment policy accordingly. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to make a motion to deny the extension of the senior citizen deferment deferment of an parcel 95, 921, 5480, and to amend the city's assessment policy accordingly. Discussion? 
Councilman DeBlee? Yes, does, has legal counsel referred this? Is this any type of? Councilmember DeBleek, we did review the uh, report from staff as well as conduct some research into the statutes and the city's authority to grant deferments of special assessments. It, uh, it is definitely the case that the council has discretion to grant such deferments. They have no obligation to do so. Okay, there's, there, there's no obligation that we have to grant a deferment. It's up, totally up to our discretion. That's correct. Any further discussion? Uh, simple motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. The final item on our agenda were some reports. Um, a report for outstanding indebtedness, interest in dividends, cash investments, and the fourth quarter investment activity. That concluded the business of the, uh, the committee. Unless there's questions, I'd move to file these minutes. Second. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the Finance Committee report for April 9th, 2012. Uh, discussion? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. And we have the Labor Relations Committee report for April 11th, 2012. Councilman Lahman. Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. I wonder if these gentlemen here were here for the Islamic uh, Society discussion? I'm sure they were. Uh, planning Commission. Explain what, what we did with the Planning Commission. and The Planning Zach, if I may just uh, tell you that the Planning Commission uh, met and was in the meeting and they approved the, uh, the mosque location and uh, then it came to the council and we the council approved all the consent items which included the minutes of the planning commission which included the, the visit or the the uh, agreement use. on that so that has been approved just so that you're aware of that uh, did I explain that well enough mm-hmm So now we will move into the Labor Relations Committee report. Councilman Ahmed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> <laughs> uh, item number one on the, on the agenda was a request to change part-time staff positions for the Wilmer Police Department. It was a recommendation of our police chief. Uh, Ms. Stevens reviewed the proposal to eliminate two seasonal bike patrol positions and replace those with a year-round community service officer or CSO position at no additional cost. Chief Weifel stated that his recommendation was based upon ongoing review of the police department and a decision that the bike patrol was no longer the most effective way of using uh, part-time staffing. Uh, Councilman Christensen asked about the change in vehicle from a pickup truck to a van. Uh, Chief Weifel stated that this was also a change based on cost and, and efficiencies. I also asked about the public's perception of the bike patrol being eliminated and Chief Weifel stated that he didn't believe uh, the public would notice any change in service. Um, Councilman Anderson uh, moved, uh, made, Councilman Anderson seconded the motion uh, and uh, it was carried uh, to make the following recommendation. That is, uh, the council approved the elimination of a seasonal bike patrol positions and replaced those positions with a year-round CSO position. And I'd move the recommendation of the committee, Mr. Mayor. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the elimination of uh, seasonal bike patrol positions and replace these positions with a year-round CSO position. Uh, now, I don't have this in my notes, but is this a... Uh, just simply, I think it can be done just as a voice vote. Voice vote? Yes. Is there a discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. <coughs> that motion carries. Item number two is Ms. Stevens informed the committee that the Public Works Director, Ms. Wilson, and Superintendent uh, Colleen Thompson were present to discuss uh, 
McLean, the superintendent works at the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we're present to discuss proposed changes in staffing at the treatment plant due to pending retirements. Ms. Stevens stated that the staff was not asking for a final decision uh, at the meeting, but uh, seeking some feedback from the committee before proceeding, and it also means from the rest of the council also. Uh, Ms. Wilson uh, reviewed current staffing levels of the department, which consists of 11 positions, and provided a proposed organizational chart based on restructuring. Ms. Wilson stated that the overall positions of 11 would remain the same, but the duties would be divided uh, differently, which would allow for the creation of a new position of environmental manager. The proposed environmental manager would be a position funded by the wastewater as well as by the general fund as the position would also be responsible for stormwater regulations and permits. The committee raised questions regarding the proposed new position and potential duties and costs, as well as questions regarding the proposed, the proposed change of an operator position to an operator slash electrician position. We express, uh, Ms. Councilman Anderson expresses concerns on the rate structure and his desire to see the operating costs decrease at the new facility. Uh, Councilman Christensen also stated a desire to see the cost reduced. Uh, Ms. Thompson stated that she was not completely, uh, not, was not comfortable uh, recommending staffing uh, reductions at this time due to the staff still learning the new operations at the new wastewater treatment plant. But she uh, would also hope to reduce some of the energy and chemical costs as uh, their training continues. Ms. Wilson stated that the increased environmental regulations and the value to the city of having one centralized person leading the city's environmental compliance and education would be an asset. After further discussion, it was the consensus uh, was for staff to return with additional information regarding the job descriptions, job descriptions proposed pay ranges, and costs <coughs> associated with change. Uh, item number three was uh, I, inter I reviewed the change in the process uh, for the two for 2012 regarding the city administrator's performance review, uh, and that we the city council should provide the responses to me as as they can or to Audrey no later than April 20th, either electronically or by electronically or by hard copy. Uh, I also stated that Ms. Sharon Klump of Springstead would be facilitating the review process and that <clears throat> I was very pleased with how it was structured based upon I had uh, discussions that I had with her. I also stated that a closed session would be held May 7th at 6 p.m. for the purpose of reviewing the evaluation with the city administrator and I believe that will be here at 6 p.m. That is, that is correct. We will use the conference room adjacent to this room. Great. Thank you. <coughs> that item was for information. Item number four was uh, Ms. Stevens informed the committee that the city had received the date of June 28, 2012 for arbitration with LELS, that's the Wilmer Police Department, and George Latimer, former, former mayor of St. Paul, who was chosen by the uh, State Arbitration Board to be our arbitrator. With that, uh, that's all the business we have before the committee. I move to file the minutes unless there's any questions. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the uh, Labor Relations Committee reported for April 11th, 2012. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Uh, Councilman Dockin, would you uh, tell us about the Community Development Committee report for April 12th? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Community Development Committee met on Thursday, April 12th. Those present were <coughs> Jim Dockin, Steve Allman, Bruce DeBleek, Ron Christensen, Bruce Peterson, and Charlene Stevens. Others present were the Mayor, uh, Frank Yanish, and citizens John Sullivan and Laura Becker. There were no public comments. Item number two was land use hearing notification requirements and hearing procedures, and this is for information only. Staff reviewed with the committee the procedures for land use applications, public notification, hearing conduct and ex expectations, project review and findings of fact, 
and the role of the Planning Commission and the City Council. And there's an attachment to this also and on our website. The committee discussed the following matters relating to the land use review pro process. And they were repetitive testimony, offering written testimony, recording hearings, not required minutes are the official record, notification requirements, the level of council authority in the land use review, and opportunities for planning commissioner training. Following discussion, it was the consensus of the committee that they had a much better understanding of the process for <coughs> reviewing land use applications, including the roles of the planning commission and the council making decisions. Mr. Mayor, I don't know if uh, you would like uh, for staff to go through some of the uh, the highlights of the conditional use permit. Otherwise, uh, uh, there were no other uh, items that came before this meeting. Uh, I see Mr. Peterson isn't here, so how about <laughs> if we bypass that for the seat? Uh, Mr. Peterson, oh, Mr. Peterson, uh, Mr. Peterson, Mr. Peterson is changing seat. Yeah. Camel. <laughs> Camel tie. In the wrong seat. <laughs> Would you care to comment? <laughs> Put that in the minutes. <laughs> I'll make a note. <laughs> Your, uh, Mayor Yanish, members of the council, I'd care to comment if I was indeed here. In my absence, I will also comment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, periodically we'll do these reviews at the committee level just to make sure that everyone understands procedurally how certain things happen with the planning commission. And it's it's not intuitive, so I always welcome the opportunity to provide that level of education to the committee and council. In this particular case, we were focusing on conditional use permits and exactly how they operate. And I explained to the committee that um, we take applications at the staff level, we review them for completeness, uh, we, can, we collect the fee from the applicant following our decision internally that we have a complete application in-house, there's a 60-day rule that's triggered. Um, that's a statutory requirement that a land use decision be rendered within 60 days or that the council <coughs> take action to grant itself an additional 60-day uh, review period. In this case, it would be granting the Planning Commission additional time for review. These hearings do require public hearings, or the matters do require public hearings, and we have to meet certain requirements. They have to be published and mailed out to property owners at least 10 days prior to the hearing. And we have to mail them out to all property owners that live within 350 feet of the subject property, and that again is a statutory requirement. That does not prevent other persons from appearing in and speaking at a public hearing because we do publish notice so there are people that may have a general <coughs> interest in a subject. We are fairly specific on what we require the applicant to provide to us and uh, one of the handouts does explain what we require from them uh, as far as a site plan drawn to scale with dimensions, uh, existing and proposed buildings, setbacks, um, off street parking, traffic flow, building elevations if they're making building changes, uh, location of utilities, proposed and existing, and landscape plans. Those are all things that the Planning Commission wants to take a look at in the course of the hearing. Uh, additionally, we provide an applicant with information regarding all the utility officials and staff people that they would need to talk to. Um, municipal utilities, we'd have Natural Gas Quest, uh, Century Link now, uh, Intel, Charter, and then we also provide them contact information for the city fire marshal, the city building official, city engineer, and the Minnesota DOT if they are dealing with any use on a <coughs> state highway, and with the county engineer if they are dealing with a use on a county road. Um, that's the information that goes into that process. Uh, once all the information is collected from the applicant and we publish the hearing, uh, that, that's when the real work begins, hearing from the applicant, condensing that information, and making sure that the Planning Commission has the information they need to make a decision and to support that decision with findings of fact gained from uh, 
testimony provided at the public hearing as well as from the information provided by the applicant. Um, that's, that's pretty much a process, Mr. Mayor, and uh, you'll recall that from your days at the helm of the planning I commission. I do, yes, so thank you. You're no stranger to that. <clears throat> Any further discussion? I believe we have a motion on the table. I would move to, uh, unless there are questions, I'd move to file these minutes. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to file the minutes of the community development report for April 12th. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. That motion carries. Next we have the consideration of the contract for professional services agreement for the airport engineering and planning. Holly, would you care to tell us about that? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. The city of Wilmer uh, solicited statements of qualifications for a consultant for Wilmer Municipal Airport Engineering and Planning Services. Uh, this is required to, to obtain grant funds for projects specific to the airport because and we received five submittals from five five firms we uh, we put together a committee to review those submittals uh, the committee consisted of staff members as well as a representative <coughs> as well as a representative from the airport commission that helped with the interview process the the initial review committee looked at the five proposals and scored them based on our recommendations we selected two for interviews, and that's when the airport uh, commission chairperson was involved in the selection process during the interviews. Um, after interviews, the recommendation from staff would be to enter into a con to negotiate for the city administrator and the mayor to negotiate a contract for professional services agreement with Bolton and Mink for airport and engineering planning services for a period of five years. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded uh, to authorize the mayor and the city administrator to negotiate a contract for a professional services agreement with Bolton and Mink for airport engineering and planning services. A discussion. Councilman Amon? Uh, why five years? Why such a long agreement? That is what is required by the FAA. The federal government's requiring that we have a consultant for five years on record? In order to get grant funds for our airport projects. Can yes. it be reviewed in, uh, every year? But it has to be the same engineer for five years? The advisory circular that we have been provided by the Federal Aviation Administration was that the agreement with a consultant would be for a five year period. And just out of curiosity, how much of that could we do in house? Or, or, or is this the type of contract we're going to? and negotiate is going to be based on an as-needed basis. The amount of work that would be done in-house is, is limited because of the um, special nature of airport projects and requirements associated with that. The funding for the, for the, to fund the airport consultant for their fees is reimbursable through the grant funds. So, for example, if we got a federal grant for a project and the um, the allocation is 90% federal, 10% municipal. 90% of the engineering fees would be reimbursable through the grant. 10% would be through um, the municipal side. So the majority of the monies is reimbursable through our grant funds. Okay, thank you. Councilman Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I read this in the paper. I forget which day it was, Saturday or Friday or Saturday last week. And... and um, <coughs> thought to myself, why didn't I know anything about this? Um, isn't this something that you go through a committee? Um, we normally are aware of, at least in the bidding process, who the bidders were and what their bids are, and was uh, Bolton and Mink the lowest bid, or were they not the lowest bid? Uh, and who was the review committee or interview committee? Who, who, um, who was involved in this? I, I, I expected this to maybe go through a committee meeting because that's how we're set up and I read it in the paper and someone mentioned to me I sat and I said I don't know anything about it um, shouldn't be happening 
Well, I, I would say um, in terms of, I can answer the first question about why it didn't go through a committee. I mean, part of that is because we didn't have uh, public works and public safety. We, we did not have a couple of committee meetings and so we moved forward with this item and brought it forward to council because of that with our scheduling. And as far as the review committee and who, who served on that, Holly can certainly answer those questions. The initial review committee consisted of the planning director, myself, the airport manager, and the finance director. That was the initial review committee that reviewed the five proposals based on the criteria in the, in the statement of qualifications. The interview process consisted of those same four people with addition to Pat Curry, the airport commission chairman. Um, there was no low bid per se for the, pro for the statement of qualifications because it was a statement of qualifications. There's no dollars exchanged at this time. It was merely based on qualifications for the, for the airport services. I, I, I guess I'm lost here. If, have we had these contracts in the past? I don't remember looking at them, I guess. Um. Yes, we have. The last um, airport consultant that was on, on contract was HNTB, <laughs> and that was done when we were in the process of building the new airport um, and they have ex exceeded their five-year contract so it is time to renew. So HNTB was ours for the last five years then? Five years plus, yes. Five years plus. We and are overdue for this process. Um, I, I gotta ask, did they uh, submit a bid? They did not. To our benefit. Um, <laughs> you, you mentioned something about Mr. Curry, was he on one of these yeah. committees you said? Uh, he, was, he was part of the interview process. Kay. Once we selected the two top um, consultants that submitted statements of qualifications, we brought them in for interviews and for further clarification of their qualifications. He was in invited and involved in that process. And, and he's presently on the um, airport commission. I must he's say. the I'm chairman of the sure. airport commission. That was my next question to make sure that they were involved in it. Thank you. Oh yeah, I have a question. So I think the way I understand this is, is that we don't know what we're paying? It is project based. That's correct. We do not have a dollar amount for this contract. Each, and there is a representative here from Bolton and Mink that can probably answer some of the questions more specifically related to this, but each project that we would do with the airport would come back to the council or to the committee with a dollar amount associated with that, and we would do more like a work order than a contract um, to clarify the costs that would be associated with the project for both engineering and construction costs. Do you have anything you'd like to comment on, or could you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Jared Vogie, Bolton and Mank. Um, I think. Ms. Wilson did a great job summarizing the structure. Um, it is a, a five-year period for those those contracts. Um, actually, it's required that every five years um, the consultant be reevaluated or that professional services agreement. Um, as projects come up, work orders will be developed. Um, provided that council acts on the resolution, I, I believe, which is enclosed in your packets this evening. Um, and adopts that, the master partnership agreement will be prepared. That's uh, the agreement required by the FAA. As projects come up at the airport, separate work orders will be developed. Those work orders will be brought before the council for approval. Essentially what those will do is they will identify the project, they will identify the project costs, including any engineering fees associated with that, and also um, timelines. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councilman Alvin? Uh, I have a question for you, uh, Joe. So, so your fee is based on what? Is there a flat fee in there? Or when, when you talk about negotiations for five years, I've kind of unusual for me and strange to see negotiation for a five-year contract. What is your fees on top of the construction cost for the engineering design? Is, are they all based on that, any specific project or is it based on a flat rate or percentage? No, it's based on the individual specific projects. As part of the project process, as the projects are identified, um, 
a scope and a cost estimate for our services will be included in the overall project. And that's, um, the FAA is very specific about scoping associated with airport projects uh, because especially in the planning arena, um, everything has to be identified in that scope. Nothing can, nothing can occur outside of that scope. So it's an individual project basis. And just out of curiosity, I didn't realize that you were into airport uh, uh, management or design or uh, anything like that. It, what's your experience with that? Uh, currently, we service or provide service to over 36 general, general aviation airports in the state. Um, we provide service to airports in Wisconsin and also Iowa. Um, we've been doing that for approximately 40 years. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Baca? Yeah. I have a question also. <laughs> <laughs> Can't let you sit down. Can't no get that quick. Is there, is there a requirement for us to coordinate this activity with the Minneapolis FAA office? Absolutely. Okay. The airport projects will definitely go through them, go through the FAA, um, as well as MnDOT Aeronautics, and, and be reviewed by those, those agencies. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Before you sit down again, sure. uh, Councilman Johnson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as I understand it, the, each project is, well, you, as, the, as projects come up, you would be the, uh, your firm, Bolden and Mink, would make the application or the grant application or whatever is involved, but there would be a fee for that, for your services for doing that. Correct. Related to each project. Correct. Uh, project based. But we'd only get the reimbursements that uh, Ms. Wilson referred to if we were if we received the grant. Correct. Correct. And and we can we can get into some of the funding um, portions of that. But at any rate, there is a um, there's entitlement dollars that the airport is eligible for, um, and as as some of the existing projects that are in process of being completed, for example, the land release and all those approvals, as soon as, as, soon as the, the Wilmer Airport comes back into compliance for that, there is a, a pot of money that is available out there for the airport. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councilman Dockman? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, talking about coming back into compliance, where are we on that right now? We have submitted all of the documentation for the phase one release and we are about to submit the documentation for the phase two release. The FAA is doing their, inter um, their internal review and they have yet to give us a timeline for completion of that internal review despite multiple requests. Okay, thank you. Councilman Fagerly, did you have a question? I did, Mr. Mayor, thank you. So you're not only working with the new airport, you'll be working with the old airport property too. We're here to provide any aviation services that the City of Wilmer or the Wilmer Airport Commission requests of us. Okay, but there shouldn't be too many issues at the new airport, is it? I mean, um, it's three, four years old. So. Correct. There's a, there's a, uh, and Holly, you can jump in whenever you want, but. We do have a, a similar to our city five-year capital improvement program. We also, there is also an airport capital improvement program that is put in together in conjunction with MnDOT Aeronautics, and those are the types of projects that Bolton and Mink would be used for those projects, such as the ALP update, master plan update, um, you know, those types of projects that are needed out at the new airport. Okay, anything with the structure itself? If you're referring to the hangars no, or build, the building? Terminal. And the water issues, is that what you're referring to specifically? I believe those water issues have been addressed now um, with some efforts that we had put with HNTB, but I, I would be shocked if Bolton and Mink didn't, didn't jump at the opportunity to help us with anything that we requested them with. So they're there to serve for the airport. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Dockin. Aye. Fagerly. Aye. 
Tablik. Aye. Reese. Aye. Christensen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Amon. Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. That motion carries. Uh, I think we will do the announcement of the council committee meetings. Uh, Councilman Amon. No meeting scheduled that I'm aware of. No meeting scheduled. And uh, Councilman Anderson. Finance Committee will meet Monday, April 23rd at 445. Councilman Dawkins, Community Development. April 26th, 445, Conference Room 1. And Councilman Reese. Public Works, Public Safety will meet Tuesday, the 24th at 445. Okay. Uh, I have one miscellany item uh, that I would like to ask legal advice on. I received a couple of emails today uh, regarding the mosque at the old Lafayette School. Is that a done deal now that we've uh, passed this at the City Council? Or <coughs> shall I visit a little bit about the emails that I received? Mr. Mayor, procedurally, it is a done deal. This has been passed. The conditional use permit was granted at the planning commission level, which is the body that has that authority under your ordinances. Today, the council has taken the step to approve the minutes from that meeting. Uh, so the conditional use permit has application has been granted. Okay, but I would, if I may, let the record show that I did receive two emails opposing that uh, for one reason or another, and uh, I, I won't read them as long as it doesn't make sense to do that. Um, renewal of a lease between the city and the Wilmer and Minnesota Department of Public Safety. Yes, this item came to um, uh, came to the city of Wilmer rather late, so it did not go through a committee either, um, and that is in part because the state of Minnesota realized that their lease um, was expiring, and it is a lease that exists between the city and the Department of Public Safety, Driver and Vehicle Services. It allows the Department of Public Safety, Driver and Vehicle Services to use a portion of transportation drive to conduct motorcycle tests. Um, it has been um, in place since 2005 and had an um, initial renewal. It had one, a one, one renewal to it, and um, they're asking for a second renewal of this. According to the chief of police, there's been no problems with the current lease, um, and so it is the, and there's no additional cost or revenues to the city from for the lease. And so at this point, I would um, recommend approval of the lease renewal and authorize the mayor and city administrator to execute the lease. So moved. Second. The motion has been made and seconded to approve the lease renewal and authorize the mayor and city administrator to execute the lease. Uh, discussion? Roll call. Council Member Dockin? Aye. Fagerly? Aye. Dibley? Aye. Reese? Aye. Christensen? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Amon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Eight ayes, zero nays. And that motion carries. Uh, I would entertain a motion uh, to uh, adjourn at this Mr. point. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. I'm sorry. No, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm going to be in school next week, Monday through Saturday, and I will not be able to make uh, the community development committee meeting. So if somebody could, Rick, if you could sit in for me, I'd appreciate it. Would you be able uh, to do that? And also, uh, we have a charter commission meeting coming up on tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow at 1 o'clock, and that is in conference room 2. I just want to make sure I got that right. And the downtown plan is, is available for the uh, revitalization of the downtown, available at... Uh, City Hall, and we're going to have that at the fire station. Fire station, also. Okay. Wednesday. That meeting, the, the downtown public meet. There is a public meeting scheduled for um, for the downtown draft plan, and that is at seven o'clock on Wednesday, uh, April 18th. And uh, the plan is available um, for anyone who is interested for review on the city's website. It's a lengthy document. It's about 42 pages, but it yep. is available electronically on the city's website and can be downloaded or printed from there if anybody wishes to do so. All right. Yeah, thank you uh, very much. Appreciate it. And the Charter Commission is tomorrow at 1 p.m. Yep. The Charter Commission has invited the City Council to attend. I would encourage the City Council members, those that can make it, to make it uh, so that we have some representation there. Uh, also, I'd just like to make a note here uh, to remind everyone that the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast is on May 3rd, 6.30 in the morning, so go to bed early the night before. Uh, 
They will be held in conjunction with the uh, National Day of Prayer. And uh, we have information and posters and so forth at the City Hall. Uh, I had a motion and a second to adjourn. We are adjourned.